गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस वेलकम टू आवर चैनल मेडिकल मिस्ट्री वी आर हेयर टू सोल्व योर मिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्जाम्स सो टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज डिपथीरिया कमिंग टू डिपथीरिया डिपथीरिया इज एन एक्यूट बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन इट इज एन बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन ऑफ एक्यूट नेचर दैट इज कोज बाय द टॉक्सीजेनिक स्ट्रेंस ऑफ कॉर्नी बैक्टीरियम डिपथीरिया वट इज द ऑर्गेनिजम कॉर्नी बैक्टीरियम डिपथीरिया This corny bacterium diphtheria will produce exotoxins, and that are responsible for the disease mainly. Next is exotoxin effects, or these are mainly the signs and symptoms we will be seeing. So, exotoxin effects will be formation of a greyish white membrane, which is a false membrane, and this is called false membrane because it will bleed on removal. there is a true membrane also that is present in case of tonsillitis membranous tonsillitis that will not bleed on removal next there will be congestion edema local tissue destruction can be seen enlargement of regional lymph nodes can be seen that is cervical lymph nodes or jugulo digastric lymph nodes and there will be signs and symptoms of toxemia that can be seen in any of the diseases mainly next is the causative organism causative organism is corny bacterium diphtheria as i told earlier also and it is a gram positive non motile bacilli that will produce a powerful exotoxin and effects of exotoxin we have seen earlier there will be mainly four strains uh, if you want to learn you can learn but it is of no great use next comes is source of infection so source of infection can be from cases carriers or infective material cases can be subclinical cases with very less symptoms or frank cases with high symptomatic rate or next is carriers carriers can be of nasal carriers or throat carriers nasal carriers are uh, that is nasal secretion will be present uh, nasal involvement will be there and there is throat carriers with involvement of larynx trachea etc infective material is from nasopharyngeal secretion that is from the nasal type and discharge from the skin lesions there is a cutaneous uh, lesion component of also of diphtheria that can lead to discharge and that can lead to infection and there can be fomites that is infected material is passed on to pen pencil and that is used by other person that can lead to infection period of infectivity is usually 40 to 28 days but in cases of chronic carriers it can increase like it can be 2 months 3 months depends on the person to person next coming is the host factors in host factors age is very important so it will occur in age group of school going children that is 1 to 5 years of age and 1 to 5, if a question comes to you that is in that given there is non humanized child 1 to 5 years along with signs and symptoms of diphtheria that is false membrane is present fever is there dysphagia is there then it is sure short case of diphtheria only next coming to gender it is equal in both the genders uh, immunity first few weeks immunity is provided by the maternal part so there are less chances of infection but as the maternal uh, immunity is withdrawn there are chances of infection so we need to give immunization and with immunization uh, chances of infection decreases next coming to to the environmental factors it will be occurring in all the seasons but mainly it will be seen in the winters winters will favor the infection next is the mode of transmission mode of transmission is by droplet infection from the nasal or throat carriers cutaneous lesions there will be cutaneous secretions can be there then that can lead to transmission or fomites that is infected pen pencil etc coming next is incubation period incubation period is 2 to 6 days incubation period can be asked to you guys in one word or in viva it's important you can learn it by like there is a membrane that is false membrane it will bleed on removal so bleeding time is also 2 to 6 minutes and incubation period is 2 to 6 days you can remember by that next coming is clinical features 
so there are mainly three clinical types that is pharyngotonsillar type laryngotracheal type and nasal type pharyngotonsillar will be involvement of pharynx tonsil laryngotracheal will be involvement of larynx trachea nasal will be involvement of the nasal septum and the turbinates next is pharyngotonsillar type so in pharyngotonsillar we can see sore throat that is due to pharyngitis or tonsillitis there will be dysphagia due to enlarged tonsils or pharyngitis low grade fever can be seen and there is a pseudo membrane that will bleed on removal as i have told earlier also there will be bull neck appearance bull neck appearance will be due to enlargement of jugular digastric nodes or deep cervical nodes coming next is the laryngotracheal type laryngotracheal is preceded by that pharyngotonsillar phase that is after pharyngotonsillar phase has occurred there can be chances of laryngotracheal infection and in laryngotracheal infection there will be involvement of larynx and trachea there can be fever cough hoarseness of voice due to larynx involvement and severe complication may lead to spread to bronchial tree also when coming next is the nasal type nasal type is the mildest form and it is localized to mainly turbinates and the septum last one is the cutaneous type cutaneous type is a secondary infection secondary infection to a previous abrasion that is earlier there was a abrasion present on which infection through fomites or discharge get infested that will lead to cutaneous manifestation of diphtheria and it will be mainly presenting as a ulcer with the base next is the control of cases control of cases we can divide into uh, control of cases and carriers control of contacts and control in the community first one is cases and carriers so for that we need early detection isolation isolation of the cases and the carriers and treatment treatment we give separate for cases and separate for carriers for cases it is intramuscular iv intramuscular or intravenous diphtheria antitoxin is given and along with it penicillin or erythromycin along with it penicillin or erythromycin is given for 5 to 6 days as a prophylactic treatment and to carriers erythromycin is given for 10 days and it is given in oral form now coming to the antitoxin as we have given to cases antitoxin antitoxin to be given in different quantities based on the severity of the disease in mild forms will be giving 20k to 40k units in moderate form will be giving 40k to 60k units and in severe forms will be giving 80k to 1 lakh units of antitoxin next is contacts so contacts we are again divided into three parts like immunization was done but it was before 5 years it if it was before 5 years booster dose of diphtheria toxoid to be given and if immunization was within 5 years no need of action as there will be sufficient immunity present because of that immunization if the person is non immunized no immunized was no immunization was done earlier you can give immunization penicillin or erythromycin is given and antitoxin is also given so three things we have to do immunization penicillin or erythromycin and antitoxins now coming to the community how we can control in community so we have to do immunization and we have to give booster dose every 10 years that will lead to decrease of diphtheria cases in the community next coming to the immunization immunization is divided into three categories again that is there are three types of vaccine combined or mixed vaccine single vaccine and there is antisera there is antisera so combined or mixed vaccine there are mainly two important vaccine first one is dpt diphtheria pertussis and tetanus second is pentavalent that is along with dpt there is hepatitis b vaccine and influenza vaccine then there is dtpw that P, uh, pw stands for pertussis whole cell dtpa p 
PA stands for pertussis acellular. DT is also there that pertussis component is not there. And DT that is diphtheria and tetanus that is given to the adults. Single vaccines include mainly we have to remember two mainly formal toxoid and APT that is alum precipitated toxoid formal toxoid and APT. Antisera as I have already told diphtheria antitoxins we can give and that is given to cases or carriers based on the type. Coming next is the DPT. Of all the vaccines DPT and pentavalent are important and from DPT and pentavalent also DPT is very important. So DPT is vaccine of diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus. In this pertussis component is an adjuvant that is it will enhance the potency of the vaccine and it is given at the age of 6, 10 and 14 weeks first three doses will be given then fourth dose will be given at 16 to 4, 24 months and last fifth dose is given 5 to 6 years after that every 10 years we can receive a booster dose but booster dose will not contain DPT it will be only DT and DPT is given in 0.5 ml that is intramuscularly over the anterolateral aspect of thigh as I already told pertussis will decrease with age pertussis is present up to the age of 5 years 6 years only so if vaccination is not done up to that age 5 years 6 years and we have to give vaccination of diphtheria and tetanus then we will give DT vaccine as pertussis is not going to infect the child complications of DPT can include encephalite that is mainly neurological complication will be there in neurological complication we can see encephalitis prolonged convulsions can be there or race syndrome can be there that's all for today thank you guys hope to meet you again in the next video if you like the video please share with your friends and subscribe the channel thank you